Hey everybody, my name's Jeremy, and today we're taking a look at a Winchester 1885 low wall in 17 Winchester Super Magnum. Now you'll know that I you'll notice that right away I have this bipod affixed to it. That's only so I can just set the rifle down and it doesn't fall over. Um, I didn't want to get any marks on it. It's a pretty expensive little rifle. I think they're gonna retail new for around eighteen hundred dollars. This is a new one going for about sixteen. This rifle has the availability to put an optic on top. It's drilled and tapped on the top of the receiver here, as well as on top of the barrel. And you can get a nice little uh, rail that goes across there and you can fix an optic to it. Or you can go with the traditional style sights. This 1885 low wall is a falling block style. So it basically has a little lever here on the bottom. And when you push that forward, this here, the back end drops down. Uh, you'll notice that I do have a bipod ad adapted to this. Um, you could put a bipod on if you want to. My only reason is I've just got it on there lightly just to hold the rifle up because I didn't want it falling over because it is a fairly expensive rifle. The other provision, so it does have that front sling stud. It also has one on the rear and that's so you can attach your sling to it very easily and it comes like that. Uh, the trigger on it is supposed to be very crisp, but we're going to test that out. We're going to see what it's like and we're going to see how this little guy shoots. Uh, I'm going to try shots at 25 yards and then 100 yards. And uh, the 100 yard one, I'm going to lay down with the bipod on it. And at 25, we're just going to stand up and shoot freehand. Uh, both sights will be, both shots will be open sights. Uh, no optic on this rifle. So here is the uh, falling block action in the open position. And then I'll shut it. Okay, there's your hammer in the cocked position. To let it off, you just put your thumb back on it, release, press the trigger back, and then just release the tension on it like that. And then when you have fired your shot, it's back in that position, just to cock it, back like that. Load it, it's ready to fire. So here's our rear sight on this rifle. And then uh, on up to the front sight. So these rifles are made by Miracu in Japan and then they're imported back into uh, Browning in Utah. So they're not actually made in the States, they are made over in Japan. One little important thing to remember is that all the Winchesters now are made through Browning. They actually hold the Winchester name now and so they manufacture all the Winchester rifles that you see that are modern production on the market today. Here is the rubber butt pad on the end of this rifle. It's a decelerator pad, and uh, it's, uh, you don't need anything too cushiony for this rifle, as there's not much recoil out of it at all, but what it does do is it protects the end of the stock with a nice rubber butt pad. In this shot here, you can see a good example of the uh, crown on this rifle. Um, I'm not sure the degree of the crown, I didn't really research into that, but uh, you can see definitely from this shot here, it does have a nice little crown to recess back in to where the rifling stops at the end of the barrel. Here is the brass bead at the front of this uh, rifle sight. Uh, it's nicely done up so that you can acquire your nice sight picture with the little diamond at the other end there on the leaf sight. Here is a uh, shot of our rear leaf sight in the folded down position just to better show you uh, the little white diamond there that you can line up with the brass bead at the front. Uh, what I was trying to do is I was trying to put that brass bead just sitting on top of that little diamond for my sight picture. Um, I did find it was hard with this rifle as the, the comb on the rear of the stock is pretty high. Now here's a shot of our falling block action from the rear of the rifle. And uh, I will run the action just to show you how that all operates from this angle. There is our caliber designation and the uh, make of the rifle, Winchester 1885 low wall, 17 WSM only. So you've got Winchester as a, the make, 1885 low wall as your model, and 17 Winchester Super Mag as your caliber. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our shots here at 25 yards. We're gonna do a three shot group, and I'm gonna aim for the top left corner circle target on my uh, target. You'll see it once we're done where I'm shooting. So we're just going to do three shots standing. I'm actually going to remove my glove. It's a lot easier to load the rifle with, uh, with your fingers. So it's fairly simple to load. 
there is our 17 Winchester Super Mag cartridge. It's a single shot rifle, so with the lever open position, just drop it in there, like that, and then close it. The gun's cocked and it's ready to go. It is quite a sharp sound, so that's why I am using ear protection even though it's a rim fire. It is a little hard to get your head down and get that in the right spot. Fairly easy rifle to load, and uh, the trigger is very crisp on it. Like I said, the only problem I'm having is getting that uh, sight to line up properly. It would be much better with an optic on there, and uh, just forget about the sights altogether. It is more traditional though with the sights. So the gun's unloaded and we're safe. We're going to take a look at that target now. Okay, so you can see uh, the target here better now. Uh, one of those shots made it right into that circle, and then the other two are out. And that is because we are using the uh, sighting system on that rifle. It's just, it's a little harder to use. I find it's really hard to get my head down the right spot. Uh, maybe I'm not doing something right, but uh, yeah, it is a little difficult to use those uh, iron sights on there. An optic would work much better for me, and that's what I'm used to using. So we're gonna try now back at 100 yards, and we're gonna shoot for the big, the big bull. Okay, so in this shot here, we're going for 100 yards. So here is my shots at 100 yards. Uh, you can see that two are on the paper. One here, one here, and then I found one that went off here. And the other two, I don't really see them. They might have hit the ground, um, or they might just be lost in this rubbish here at the bottom. Uh, not very good at 100 yards with open sights. Uh, I'm probably mostly to blame with that. I couldn't get my head down low enough to get that sighted that sight to work properly. Um, at 25 yards up at the top left there, you can see I had a little better luck. It's a little better of a group. Um, still, I would be happy though if they were all inside of that black circle. Uh, but at 100 yards without an optic, yeah, it was all over the place. And I'm aiming for the top of the circle thinking that it was going to shoot low. So I got two up there, at least on the paper. Uh, shooting varmints at 100 yards with open sights, not reliable enough. Uh, at 25 yards though, if you've got small game or something like that, it's a pretty good little rifle. You put an optic on it though, and it's going to change the whole game. Uh, I'd love to see what the, uh, the rail with a uh, good decent optic on there would produce for groups for me. I think it could shoot fairly well. Awesome. Thank you for joining us on this video. If you don't want to miss the next one, please click subscribe. Also, if you wouldn't mind, share these videos and toss a like on there. See you next time. Thanks.